Hey, it's Dave from CG Shortcuts. Today, we're going to do this. We're taking a look at aerodynamics in Cinema 4D. This video was brought to you by Skillshare, where you can get access to over 25,000 full courses on a huge range of subjects. The classes are project-based and teachers take you through all the steps in creating each project and when you're done, you can share your work with teachers and the student community for feedback and support. We've actually got three CG Shortcuts courses on there now, with new courses being released regularly, covering a bunch of stuff we don't usually go into on YouTube. So if you want to test out Skillshare, there's a link below for a free two-month trial that will give you access to the entire catalogue of courses, including the courses from CG Shortcuts so you can see if it's right for you. Now let's get back to the tutorial. So here we are in Cinema 4D and you can see we've already got our scene set up here. You can download this project file below. We've just got four feathers in here. These guys are all mapped onto simple planes and if we come up here to display and turn the lines on, you can see those here. If we pop these open, we've also got some bend and twist deformers in here to make them look a little bit more interesting. This should also give us a bit of variation when we come to do our aerodynamic simulation. One thing to keep in mind when doing any sort of simulation in Cinema 4D, it's usually a good idea to work at the correct scale. If we come up here and take a look at one of these feathers, you can see we're working in centimeters here. So they're about 60 centimeters long, which is pretty big for a feather. But in this case, I think it should be fine. Just make sure you don't use any crazy values. If you have 10 meter long feathers, our simulation's probably not gonna work as planned. Unless you've got some kind of giant monster bird in your scene, you're probably best off with real world values. Okay, so we don't need those lines on anymore, so let's go and turn those off first. And we've got our four different feather styles here. The next thing we wanna do is clone a bunch more of these into the scene. So we'll come up here and bring in a cloner. And we'll collapse this guy and drag all four of these feathers into our cloner. And they're cloning in the Y direction at the moment. So let's click on that guy and down here under object, we're set to linear mode. Let's change that to grid array. And I think that's a good amount of feathers, but we want to randomize this a little bit. So back over here with our cloner selected, we'll come up to the MoGraph menu, effectors, and we'll bring in a random effector. And that's automatically been applied as you can see here, because we had our cloner selected when we brought it in and you can check that. Down here under the Effectors tab, there's our random effector. So we'll grab him and have a look at the settings here. So we've got some randomization down here in the position settings. This is just offsetting them 50 centimeters. We also wanna randomize the scale here. So we'll turn on uniform scale. And if we put 0.3 in here, we'll end up with some bigger and smaller feathers. And we'll switch on the rotation as well. We'll randomize this. Let's just put 90 degrees in all of these. And now that we've got these on different angles, when we go to simulate this, we should get some nice variation as they fall to the floor. So let's make these dynamic. With our cloner selected, we'll come over to tags and down to simulation tags. We'll make this a rigid body. Let's just position that and we'll hit play and see what happens. Exactly what we were hoping for. They just fall straight down and through the floor. So the first thing we need to do is make the floor a collider so our feathers land on it. So with that guy selected, we'll come up to tags, simulation tags, and this time we'll grab a collider body. And now if we hit play, the feathers collide with the floor, but they're staying in a big bunch, which is not quite what we want. Let's reset that. And we'll grab our dynamics tag on the cloner and scooch over to the collision tab. Here where it says individual elements, we just need to switch that to top level. And now if we try that again, it should treat each feather as a separate object. And it did, but we're getting a strange result. Some are passing through the floor and some are bouncing off and spinning all over the place. So we just wanna check and make sure our collisions are working correctly. And there's a cool way you can do this visually. If we hit Control D on the keyboard, we'll bring up the project settings. Then over at the dynamics tab and under visualization, we'll just enable this. And if we just play out our sim for a second and zoom in a bit, you can see these yellow shapes around each feather. And these represent the collision shape of all of our feathers, which right now isn't matching the actual geometry of our feathers very well. 
These yellow lines should match the lines of our planes that we saw before, but right now they're this triangular shape. So to make this a little bit more accurate, let's come back over to our dynamics tag and under collision, down here where it says shape, this is the result the automatic setting is giving us. But if we change this to moving mesh, and again, we'll just have to play through the sim to update this. You can see our collision mesh is much more closely matching the geometry of our planes. And this is going to give us a lot more accurate collisions. And our aerodynamics, when we eventually get there, will function much more realistically. So now that we're all set up, we can hit Control D again and disable our visualization. Then we'll reposition the camera, double check and make sure everything's okay. If we hit play, everything is falling down as it should do and it's colliding nicely. Although we're getting a little bit of shaking if we let it settle there, but we'll fix that later. Let's just watch that one more time. So while these are falling, they're falling straight down and they're not behaving much like feathers. We want them to slowly float through the air and glide down to the ground as you'd expect a feather to do in real life. So let's take a look at some of the forces that are affecting our feathers right now. With our project settings still open, we'll go over to the general tab. And down here, you can see we've got our gravity enabled, which is pulling our feathers directly down. And we've also got values in here for density and air density. So we do have air in our scene, but the air is not affecting our feathers yet. So how do we do that? Let's go back to our dynamics tag and down under the force tab, we finally come to the aerodynamics section. So if we bring up some of these values, it will let some air into our scene and affect our feathers. Let's start with the lift. We'll crank that right up to 100% and give that a go. Let's just bring this down a bit and hit play. And now the air has started to affect it. We're getting a bit of lift and these feathers are falling a bit more like feathers should, but it's not quite calculating correctly yet. Because all of these feathers are on planes, which is a one-sided object, the dynamics is only affecting one side of our feathers. But we can fix that pretty easily by turning on the two-sided option here. And then we'll have the air affecting both surfaces of our feather. So let's just frame this up and we'll hit play. And now most of them are floating softly to the ground, but some of them are going a little crazy. So before we go any further, let's fix that. This is just an issue with our steps per frame. So we'll hit Control D again to bring up those preferences. Under Dynamics, we'll go to the Expert tab and we want to adjust the steps per frame and the maximum solver iterations. This just forces Cinema 4D to do more calculations per frame and should give us a more accurate simulation. So let's just double these values here and see if that fixes the problem. All right, that's looking pretty good and not too much craziness, if any but I think our feathers are falling to the ground a bit too fast. So we'll go back to our dynamics tag and back under the aerodynamics, we can slow things down by bringing in a bit of drag. This will just increase the force of our air and keep our feathers floating a bit longer. You could almost think of it as the thickness of the air. And that's looking a bit better. Although I don't really like the feathers that are pointing straight down, they're going a bit too fast. Let me just show you which ones I mean. Like this guy here, just watch him when we hit play. He's a bit boring, he just goes straight down to the ground. So let's tweak that rotation again. We'll go back to our random effector and we'll just tweak these values until we get most of these feathers looking fairly flat and we'll give that a try. That's looking nice. Everything's slowly floating to the ground, especially this guy here. Another thing we could do is add some wind to our scene and blow these feathers around a bit. So we'll come up to simulate particles and we'll grab a wind. So you can see which way that wind is facing by the arrow here. If we hit play straight away, that should start affecting it. Although that wind is pretty soft at the moment. Let's crank the speed up here. We'll try a value of 50 centimeters. And that's looking nice. They're being blown across the plane here and over the edge. Let's try rotating our wind here. We'll grab the rotate tool. And sometimes this might happen to you where you can't see the rotation axis. To get that to show up again, just come up to filter and way down here, make sure you've got axis turned on. And there he goes. And now we can just rotate this up a bit. And now that should blow these feathers up in the air there. Let's give it a try. Looking good. 
I'm sure you'll be able to have some fun with this effect. And if you wanted to slow these down again, we'll go back here and we'll try bringing up that drag. Let's try 80%. And we'll play that. And that's looking pretty cool. Now everything is floating a bit slower through the air. Let's see what this looks like without the wind. We'll just disable that and we'll see how 80% drag affects this. Very nice. So we've got some nice realistic looking feathers floating to the ground. And that pretty much brings us to the end of this tutorial. One last really quick thing before we go. If you wanted the pointy bit or stem of the feather to seem a bit heavier, so these fall down a bit like darts, all you need to do is go to the mass tab over here and enable the custom center. We can actually move the center of gravity on these feathers. And if we wanna make that the tip, we want this to be in the negative Y direction. So let's just do negative 10 centimeters to shift that down. And now if we hit play, they float for a little bit and then that lower center of gravity pulls them down like little darts. So hopefully that helps you out with some of your simulations. As usual, you can download the project file below to save a bit of time and you can get heaps of extra resources on our Patreon page. Don't forget to swing by our website, cgshortcuts.com, for all the details on our latest monthly challenge where you can win some awesome CG prizes, including Octane render subscriptions. That's it for now, I'll catch you next time. Thanks for watching. Let me know what you want to see in the comment section below, or you can leave a like or dislike. And don't forget to subscribe and click on that little bell icon for more videos and free stuff. Catch you next time.